Mulraj Sharma has been a construction worker here for 17 years. This memorial is dedicated to the memory of some of his fellow workers who laid down their lives in the performance of their duties. Close at hand is another memorial, a memorial of their own creation, the massive Bhakra Dam, a symbol of progress dedicated to the people of India. Today, Bhakra generates over 500,000 kilowatts of electric power. A vast network of its canals and distributaries irrigates over two and a half million hectares of parched land in the Punjab and Rajasthan, bringing in better harvests and a better life for millions. Yet only a few years ago, a good harvest here was but a dream. The land was arid, a sandy waste, even drinking water was scarce and often had to be brought in by rail. Farmers ploughed their fields and prayed for rain. The future seemed bleak till Bhakra rose bringing the blessings of its water. Until recently, the now famous Bhakra was only a small village nestling in the Shivalik hills unknown beyond its immediate neighbourhood. Two miles below the village, the river Sutlej entered the plains through a narrow gorge. Its precious waters flowed into the sea, unused, wasted. In 1946, a scheme was finalised to harness the surplus waters of the Sutlej for irrigation and for generating electricity. It was planned to build a 226 metre high dam across the narrow gorge near the village of Bhakra to store the waters of the Sutlej in the Govind Sagar Lake. Two powerhouses at the dam's base would generate one million kilowatts of power. It was also planned to build a barrage at Nangal to divert the water into a hydel canal. This would feed two more powerhouses at Gangwal and Kotla. From here the waters of the Sutlej would be diverted into the Bhakra main canal and the Sarhind and Bist Doab canals for irrigation in the Punjab and Rajasthan. The peaceful valley was suddenly invaded by man and machine. Vast quantities of earth and rock had to be removed before construction could begin. First priority was given to the Nangal Heidel Canal and the Nangal Dam, which would provide power for the building of Bhakra. New roads were built across the hills. Railways moved an army of engineers and workers and a vast quantity of construction material to the Bhakra Dam site. The waters of the Sutledge were diverted through diversion tunnels so that the Sutledge would leave the centre of its bed free for construction. A conveyor belt system carried sand and gravel from quarries to the construction site. An elaborate construction plant was set up for processing concrete. Entirely automatic, it classified and distributed the various ingredients of concrete to the batching plant. The batching plant supplied ready-made concrete to the builders of Bhakra day and night. Work had started on the world's highest straight gravity dam. The Nangal Dam was ready in 1954, a year ahead of schedule. Jawaharlal Nehru opened the sluices of the dam, releasing the waters of the Sutledge into the Heidel Canal. Water to turn the turbines of Kotla and Gangwal and generate electricity. 
water to irrigate over 800,000 hectares in the Punjab and Rajasthan. November 1955, the construction entered its most exciting dramatic phase, the building of the Pakra Dam itself. Giant cantilever cranes collected and placed huge buckets of ready-made concrete exactly where required. Concreting was the main theme of the drama at Pakra. 400 tons of concrete were laid every hour, day and night, for seven years. When complete, the Pakra Dam would consume more than 5 million cubic meters of concrete, a quantity sufficient to build a two and a half meter wide road around the world along the equator. Materials for the left bank powerhouse at the base of the dam were handled automatically, like everything else in this highly mechanized project. Benstock pipes were embedded into the rocks and into the dam. Water would pass through these penstocks to turn the turbines of the power station. Never in India's long history had so many men from different parts of the country worked together for a common cause, controlling, coordinating and creating one of the most inspiring projects of our age. Within a short time, the Bhakra Dam had begun to take shape. Behind this achievement were the united efforts of Indian engineers working under one of the world's greatest dam builders, Harvey Slocum. His ideas inspired many of the special features of construction here. changed, but work did not stop. Every eight hours a new shift was on the job, and work continued round the clock unceasingly. By 1958, half the job was done. One of the diversion tunnels was permanently closed. The Govind Sagar Lake was born. Here was tangible evidence that the Sutledge could be harnessed for the benefit of man. This was a day of thanksgiving for the workers and engineers who had accepted the challenge. By now, the left bank powerhouse was also nearing completion. In 
1961, the powerhouse was commissioned by Jawaharlal Nehru. Work on the second powerhouse was started in 1962. With the completion of the powerhouse in 1966, the total installed capacity of the Bhakranangal grid would be 1,200,000 kilowatts, almost 25 times the total power available in the Punjab in 1947. The drama of building the Bhakra Dam went on unabated into its final phase. By the end of 1963, vision became reality. Behind this great achievement was the toil and sacrifice of thousands of workers and the guiding spirit of Jawaharlal Nehru. The suplage has been harnessed. The tiny village of Pakra perished in the waters of the Govind Sagar Lake to be immortalized by a newer and a bigger Pakra. On the 22nd of October, 1963, Jawaharlal dedicated the project to the people of India. The waters of the river Sutlej were released to irrigate arid lands in the Punjab and Rajasthan. Deserts brought to flower. Electric power for towns and villages, power for new industries, employment for thousands, and for millions of Indians, a richer, fuller life. Bhakra Nangal, these two words will recall Jawaharlal Nehru's vision, translated into reality by the faith, the courage, and the determination of thousands of workers. To them and to us all, Bhakra Nangal will always remain a symbol of our progress.